Welcome back to the wardrobe. If you're new here, this really is my wardrobe. This is where I spend most of my time, not only producing my radio show for podcast radio, but also producing audiobooks, which is something I only started in March, but has been so much fun. And one of the most rewarding things about it is working with the authors because this th their book is their passion. It's their life. And I have the awesome responsibility of bringing their work to life when I narrate their audio book. And I spoke to a guy today who's inspirational. His name is Kamal, but his writing name is HL, which is short for Human Lego. Don't worry, he explains why the Human Lego is important to him. Amazing guy. He's had an amazing life. He's in Houston, Texas. And his book is called Building Rome, Dreams. And it's very different to any of the other audiobooks I've done before. But he's a terrific guy, and I had a nice chat with him. This is the author of Building Rome, Dreams, HL. And stick around, because later on in this video, I'll let you know how you can get his fabulous audiobook for free. Kamal, do I call you Kamal or do I call you HL? Uh, I mean, obviously my real name is Kamal, but HL is just my writer name. Right. You know what it stands for, right? No. It's uh, HL is the Human Lego. Human Lego, which is in your email address. So does this get back to building? Exactly. That's that's what it's all about. It's so it's the it's the human Lego. You do the concept of the human Lego. It's the human and the Lego, and everyone can relate to a Lego. Every kid or every child plays with a Lego, and the human aspect is we're all trying to build ourselves. So it's the human Lego. So this book that I did is called Building Rome Dreams. Tell me all about it. All right, so. Yeah, this is this is actual copy. Um, That's it. That's what it That's looks it. like. Yeah. So it's uh, you know, just the building room. You read uh, room wasn't built in a day. You know, so that's the concept. You know, we as humans, we always trying to build the best version of ourselves, but we get frustrated or tired when things get tough. But we always have to remind ourselves, room wasn't built in a day. So to be the perfect version of yourself. You can't just give up after one day. It's something you have to consistently keep building. So hence the building room. So the pieces in there, how would you describe them? Are they poems? Are they monologues? I try not to just restrict myself to either poems or monologues. This is hence the title of dreams. You know, it was just things that I either dreamt about or it just came in while I was just sitting down, just came into my head and I just, you know, figured why don't I just write it down and put it down. These are my thoughts. You know, it's I've always had the dream of writing a book. That's one. And then second, these are all just my, you know, dreams, my thoughts. And also I've always dreamt, you know, to be a writer. So well you are. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. You got a book out that makes you a writer. So and the whole purpose of the book and I tried not to follow the conventional rule of writing. Yeah. Because I believe when you try when you when you create it, you know, when you create things, you shouldn't restrict yourself to rules. Yeah. And that kind of affects your your creative spirit. Yeah. Um it was a lovely piece for me to do. It's the first is, is this the first ever book you've done? Yes, this is the first book. <laughs> So um, you, you can tell I'm smiling a lot because I'm super excited about it. Well, I'm glad it's out as an audio book. Uh, as an audio book narrator, it's the first one I've done in this form. I've done business books and I've done fiction, but it's the first one I've done that is like this. That's a bit, it's a bit deeper, and it it makes you think. But it's wonderful as well, um, the way it's written and the ideas in there. Um, can I ask you specifically about some of the pieces? Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. So so building Rome. So 
HL, HL, she screams, why do you have yourself locked up in the room? Sculpting Rome, he replies. That's a conversation between you and your mother? Correct, yes. So where was the inspiration from that then, from your actual mother? Is this a conversation that took place and you've taken poetic license with it? Uh, it's sort of. Actually, it's a conversation that not only with my mother, but my grandmother. You know, it's it's always been, they told me I have things to say, but I never say that because I'm, I'm a very quiet person. Yeah. So they told me, you know, you should just, you have lots of things to say. You should just say it out and don't hold it in. So that's, I just combined my years of me listening to my grandmother. My grandmother's passed away, by the way, but listening to her and my mom. I just combined the whole conversation together. And I just, I guess, it's partially true. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made that up, but it's partially true also. So what's your background? Did you did you grow up in Houston? No, I was I was born in Nigeria. Wow. So when did you move to the United States? When I was 17. And you so moved was, you moved with family? I my parents were down here, so I moved with my older sister. Yeah. So and me, so, we moved, go ahead. No, so you moved and and so why did you make the move? Because that that's a big move. It is, but my, my parents have been out here, so I was, I, I was with my grandma, my manager. So we made the move based on my parents were down here already, and it was just time to reconnect with them. And also, I was done with, I, the goal was for me to get done with high school and move over and do my college education out here. That's quite a young age to, to, to change an entire culture and an ocean. It, it is, but it's not. It's not uncommon for, for Nigerians. Really, most 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 parents, and most family, they plan it out. You spend your elementary and you your secondary school or high school in Nigeria, and then you come to the United States or to London for your higher education, which is university or college. Right. So that's what I. And you and you studied then. Was that in Houston, or did you, did you move to a different place first? Actually. When I came to Houston and I was in college for my first year, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. So I dropped out of college and I joined the army. Wow, another big move. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, I joined the US Army and I was in the army. And while I was in there, I sh still struggled with what I wanted to do when I got out the army. So I had my first plan was to spend 20 years as a, in the army as a career 20 then, 20 so that's that's you know that was my plan but listening to my my parents they wanted me to have some sort of uh, formal education so, so but I, what were you doing in the army because you can learn stuff in the army yes you can i was a logistics specialist right okay logistics specialist but army. they weren't happy with that that wasn't good enough for them no that that wasn't <laughs> You know, they all had the whole concept about, well, you know, army, you're probably going to go to war and all these things. And, you know, they were worried, which it's understandable. Yeah. And uh, so I had to dig deep and ask myself, what do I really want to do? Although I went to, I ended up getting my bachelor's degree, my master's degree in uh, supply chain and logistics, which that's my full time job right now. Right. I work with a, uh, oil and gas company, but my part-time is writing, which hopefully I could make it a full-time uh, where I just write and also just be creative, you know. Like yeah. I said, I, I'll, I love to dance with my mind. You, know, you love to dance with your mind, you do. You definitely do that. You definitely yeah. do that. It's yeah, a, it's, I, it's a lovely piece. No, it is, a, it is a, a lovely piece of work. And for me, having the honor to read it, with your voice um it really was nice and i and all the time i was going i'm gonna have to talk to this guy because this guy's this guy's got some pretty deep ideas quite spiritual ideas as well it's all tied to spirituality as well isn't it correct it is it is and you know the dreams you know some of them sometimes when i go back and i read them i'm like did i write that <laughs> <laughs> right so you don't know where it comes from 
I don't. It just it just comes to me. And for years, I held back because I didn't want people's perception about me. I wasn't thinking about why is it right in this. And as I grew older, I was like, you know, it comes. It's coming to me for a reason. I don't know why, but it is in me. So I just have to put it out there. Because for years, I tried to run away from it. Well, it's in me. So you tried really... to run. So when did the writing start? You're, you're 17, you leave Nigeria, you go to the United States. By the way, could you speak English when you arrived in the United States at 17? Yes, I could. Okay, so th the language was not, not an issue at all. So when did you, when did you start writing for fun? Well, it's, it's been on and off since, I would say, since I was 12. Yeah. Since I was 12. I remembered where I had to, it was literature class in Nigeria. We had to read The Animal Fam. Yeah, George Orwell. At yeah. all. Yeah. And we had to read and give a, a book report on it. And I remembered, I didn't, I read partially, and we had a text where I had to give the book report. And I was like, I know I read it, but I hadn't finished reading it. So I just kind of like just pictured in my head what the ending would be. And... You didn't know. <laughs> you you, didn't... you rewrote it then, Kamal, really. <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what I did. And then I didn't, I didn't finish. And the instructor left a comment on my paper and said, I know, because I also got into the, into the classroom late. So I had about 10 minutes to write it as compared to 45 minutes. And the instructor gave me a C, a C plus, and said, if you had had more time, I'm sure you'd have written better. So I thought to myself, I was like, well, oh, that's good. I mean, the fact that I didn't read it. <laughs> you get a C plus from not reading it, yeah. So I, I just told myself, if I applied more discipline, maybe I'd have got an A. Well, fast forward to when I was in college, I had to take an elective, an extra class in college, and it was summertime, so I said, I'll take philosophy. And wow, everyone, so you go for the heavy stuff. Yeah, everyone always looked at philosophy as boring, and so I decided I'll just take it with no intention of thinking I'll fall in love with it. I just thought, you know, it's just an extra credit for a class. And then I took it, and I just fell in love with the conversations we would have in our classroom, because there was... I think one of the reasons why I loved it was there's no there was no right or wrong answer. Yeah. It was all about the perception and what you feel about it. And so I, I fell in love with that. And ever since then I just been writing and I I would love to consider myself one of the greats at some point. So that's well, you, you're already a writer. I forget who it was that said it, but they said that, you know, because a lot of people wait. They think, oh, I'm going to write some. One day I'll write something, and they wait. And I forget who said it, but they said, those who write are writers. Those who wait are waiters. It makes a lot and I, and it's and, and that's the same kind of vibe for people who haven't read your book. Uh, building Rome. That's the same kind of vibe all the way through. That's that's what that reminded me of because you do talk about the importance of dreaming and having a dream but also you make it very clear that you have to do something as well. It's no good just to dream. Correct. And is that from... I'm guessing you would have got that through the experience of, of, of writing the book. Because what what age are you now? So from the age of twelve to what age did? It, how long did it take to get the book out? Well, I, pub I published this book about two years ago, so back in two thousand and eighteen. So how old so are you now? Thirty six. Okay, so it's been bubbling along for a while there. Exactly, and that's where reading the book, hopefully the reader could tell it was more like. Yes, I'm advising people to follow their dreams, but also I'm also reminding myself that I have to follow my own dream. You can't wait for someone to make your dream a reality. You have to make your own dream a reality. Yeah, yeah. 
One of the ones I liked in there was, and I think it's in the sample. I think if you go to Audible and you, you check out uh, Building Rome Dreams, you'll hear me reading Who is HL? But the line at the beginning there, uh, HL is, is he, he who fears fear, so he scares it away by running after it. Yes. And I think that's, is that, that's what you're getting at there, isn't it? Not that I, not, not that I, I think, I think it's the stuff's so good that I really don't think people shouldn't be told how to interpret it. I think they should get their own thing from it. Do you, do you feel that too? Or do you, or is there a message that you, is there a specific message that you would be disappointed if they didn't get it, they didn't pick up on it? Well, my, my whole purpose of the book was for people to come up with their own meaning. Yeah. When I was writing it, it was more like an abstract art. Yeah. You know, just like you're looking at an abstract painting and you look at it and I could see one thing and you could see something else. But at the end of it, you know, it's something beautiful. You know, so that's the point of my book. I, I wanted the reader to come up with whatever they want. You know, that's why sometimes I use the sun and the moon. Yeah. And I think whatever the sun is to you, whatever the moon is to you, you know, just... Just open your mind and just think and, you know, just go as far as you could go with your, with your creative spirit, you know, not holding back. So that's the joy of being creative. You yeah. never you never want to hold yourself back. And in life, and also tied in life to succeed, you have to be creative. It's not about black and white or gray. You know, there's many layers to it. There's many colors to it, you know, so that's... That's the whole concept of the book, just whether you're a dancer, be creative and dance. If you're a writer, be creative and write. No boundaries, no rules, no laws. Just have fun with it. Don't ever think, if it comes to your mind, just go with it. Don't don't worry about what the next person is going to think, you know, because it's in you for a reason. You know, so that's, that's the purpose of the book, really. So you don't worry about what people think, but what have you noticed people do think from... Now, the audiobook is only just out, so that's probably too early to tell, but the, 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 the printed version of the book, what's the feedback and the reaction been like to that? They, they loved it so far. People that have bought it love it so far. They, you know, they feel it's inspirational, it's spiritual, um, also philosophical. You know, it's the whole philosophy about it. Which it makes me happy, it makes me smile because I believe my point is getting across. But one thing I just want people to get from the book is, you know, my gift is writing. Whatever their gift is, they need to just own up to it. Don't run away from it. You could be scared, you could be nervous, but that's the only way you can't go fair. Is by going after it. So that's one. If they don't get anything from the book, one thing they should get from the book is we all have dreams. Just make sure you follow your dreams. Don't think too hard about it. Just go for it. You know, it's better for you to try and fail than not try at all. Did you find yourself? before you started the process, did you find yourself running away from your dreams? Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I mean, I'm still running away from it. That's the truth about it. I'm still running away from it. And what is it that's pushing you away? What is it? It's, it's just a fear of failure. It's the fear the, of the, failure? It is. That's what it is. It's, it's the fear of failure. It's the fear of people not understanding the message I'm trying to put out there. What I have to keep reminding myself, those that need to understand will get it. Sometimes it's not meant for the masses, you know, but the ones that will get it, will get it. So I have to remind myself every day. And the line about me being afraid, but yet I still run after fear. Because at some point it's going to give up on me. Fear is going to give up on me. Is going to think, what's the madman in this situation? Uh, that's that's my thing. I'll just keep chasing it, keep running after it. Although I'm scared, although what 
it doesn't mean anything to me. I'll just keep pursuing it, keep following my dreams and see where it takes me. So it wasn't um, external pressure from family or, or friends or culture that, that kept you away from it? Well, partially. It was something inside? Oh, oh partially. What, what was the score? I'll tell you why I ask. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm being nosy. No, and and it's weird because, you know, I mean, I didn't I didn't make a cultural move, but I, you know, I grew up in England, but my parents moved to New Zealand when I was eighteen and took me with them, and so I was taken to the other side of the world, but then when I was twenty one, they decided to come home to England and I stayed there, so I never actually left home. I was abandoned on the other side of the world, <laughs> but it was at that moment. Because th at that stage, I was, a, I was a pipe fitter on an oil refinery construction site. That's what I did for a living. And it, although I did enjoy it and I, I met some great people, it really, I didn't really feel fulfilled. And it was only when they left and I was on my own and I decided, well, what do I really want from life? What do I really want to do? That I really started making some positive changes. And eventually I met my wife was still married over 30 years and um, we moved to Australia and I was an air conditioning engineer and I decided to get into radio because I realized that I'd always enjoyed broadcasting and listening to it but never thought someone like me could ever do it and I thought well why the hell not I'm gonna do it but I know a part of it was me holding myself back you know like I say how you know people like me don't get to do you know, broadcasting and uh, and what have you for a living, but I know it was a lot of the the family upbringing and the the environment I was in. And when that disappeared, I was freed up to just go and do it, and to fail if I wanted to. And I was just wondering if you had a similar experience because I I that when you say everybody gets what they want from the from the book, that's what it was saying to me. And there's no, and there's no way you could have known that, no way. <laughs> but so was was there a bit of that? Because I have to ask you, was there a bit of that going on that there was something about the environment you were in, maybe the army, I don't know, that was holding you in, and when that was gone, you 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 found a freedom to just go and be who you are and fulfill your potential. Yes, you know, I, there's a there's one of so when you read in the book. The whole thing about being an artist and a doctor. I don't know if you remember that. As that, give me just, a second. Just remind me of that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, you're gonna have to remind me of that because there's a lot in it. There's a lot in it. Yeah, I'm trying to go to that page. Let's see. Give me one second. No, that's okay. There's a there's a lot to go through to uh, to find the the specific. Well, and I can't remember which part of it. I can remember it was just the the overall feeling I got from it was about you know finally giving yourself permission to have the freedom to to do what yeah. you need to do. It's actually called HL's Everyday People. Okay. That's the whole tradition limits creation and tradition limits creativity. How I talked about my father was a doctor. My father's father was a doctor. My father's father's father was a doctor. Now I am a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be an artist. I want to be an artist. I don't want to live black and white. I want to live red, blue, green, yellow, maybe purple, maybe even pink. But no, I am a doctor. My father's father was a doctor. Traditional limits creativity. Their dreams haunt me. Their dreams of my reality has become my nightmare. His father's dream of, my, of his reality became his nightmare. The nightmare lived to make a dream for his son. And I went, and somewhere along the lines, I, I wrote, I am an artist. I break the cycle. I untangle tradition. I bred creativity. Creativity untangles tradition. I am not a doctor. I am an artist born to doctor my sons to choose their part. And that comes from 
being raised in Nigerian house. They either want you to be a doctor or an engineer. And it's it's all with love. It's all good intention. Of course, because they're looking out for you. They don't want you to, to, to find, you know, trying to earn a living artistically is not easy. And it's not... It, it, and it's and it's like day to day. It's 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 a very insecure um, way to live. Um, yeah. But if you've got a profession, you've always got that. Yeah. So that, so, so me writing that it was more. I understand where my parents are coming from, but at the same time, I hope I'll be different when it comes to raising my children. Telling them whether it is you want to be a doctor or you want to be a writer or you want to be an artist, just put your hundred percent to it. Yeah. It's not going to be like smoke. It's not going, it's not going to be smoke sailing, but at least you feel fulfilled. You feel happy with yourself. This is what I want. I want to do. And this is what I am doing. You that know, is, the, the, that's definitely the sentiment I had. I can remember when I, I um I auditioned to go to the top broadcasting school in Australia and I can remember being in the interview and they they asked me some questions and I, I was it was a quite an intense it's the Australian film TV and radio school it's that they only take 12 students a year and they were sat in like a horseshoe there was a a producer and the director of the thing and a copywriter and you know there was about four people and they were firing questions at me and, and I was just batting them away with, you know, answering the questions. And in the end, I actually said to them, I said, look, you know what? I'd love to get on this course. And it's the, the top one in the, in the country. But you know what? If I don't get on it, you're not going to stop me. It doesn't end here. If I walk out that door and I've not got on this course, I'm still going to do this. I don't know how. It just won't be this way. But I'm going to do this anyway with or without you. So you might as well put me on the course. <laughs> I mean, that, that's like crazy talk. But but it's that's where you that's where you end up and that's where you gotta be, isn't it? To just to get to push through. Exactly, that's where I am now. I just tell myself that I keep writing because I put posts on Instagram. Actually, my Instagram page is the Human Lego. Yeah. And I put posts on there, and once in a while I send my posts to different people. What I mean, people like people I look up to. And also how I could apply my creativity into whether it be a sports brand like Nike or Reebok or Adidas. Yeah. Or even Lego. <laughs> or even Lego. And I just keep Well Lego off. is Lego is a very creative toy. A lot of people think it's it's like construction so it's very, very creative. The ad the, the T V commercial in this country used to say and I'm paraphrasing the slogan, but Lego, it's a new toy every day. It's it a very creative thing. It is. And, and that's one of the reasons why I have the name The Human Lego, because, you know, there's so many aspects of it. With, with Lego, it's the, you could eat it. I start from being a child. When you play with a Lego, you're trying to build something beautiful. And if you don't like it, you break it down and you rebuild it. <laughs> yeah. On being a child, you never give up. No. So the, that's why I said, the possibilities are endless. Exactly. So if you look at, so even though I say I am a human Lego, I believe everyone is a human Lego. We are all human Legos. Because you're trying to build yourself into something beautiful, or into someone beautiful. And if you don't like it, remind yourself as long as you're alive, as long as you're still breathing, you could build yourself. Don't ever give up. So that's, that's, so I know I can't, it's going back to when I'm on Instagram and I tag all this Lego and I never get a call, I never get any comment or, and I'm like, I'll just keep tagging them and it's either I tag them or I don't tag them. It's either they respond or they don't respond, but I'll just keep tagging and see where it takes me. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, I am quiet, but when it comes to talking about people pursuing their dreams or following their dreams, it just makes me happy. 
Because I'm like, that's the real, true joy. As long as you're not causing any physical harm to someone, all you just want to do is just follow your dreams, follow what you, whatever it is you're passionate about. You just go for it. It's, it's just something about that just makes me happy. I could keep talking about it over and over again. Like just, you have a dream, go for it. It's not going to be easy, but just imagine you're in love with a person. You're truly in love with that person. You're going to do whatever it takes to get that person. They could turn you down multiple times, but you just keep going for it, keep going for it. At some point, they're going to think you're crazy, <laughs> but that's what it's about. You have to be crazy. You have to be real passionate. That's why we have the great artists. People might think they're crazy or they're weird, but that's because they they finally get the concept of living. You know, that there's when it comes to life, we get blinded by what society wants us to see. You know, because most times when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that comes to our mind is, okay, how am I gonna make a living? How am I gonna feed my family? Oh, I have to go to work today. But then we never actually get up and like, whoa, I'm still breathing. That's the sun. I can see the sun. Just appreciate life. Understand life. Understand like everything in life is teaching you something. (laughs) (laughs) Take her out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Everything in life is teaching you something. You know, if just the simple thing as the trees, they're teaching you something. Just don't get distracted by the society. Don't get distracted by what's going on. I have a knowledge about what's going on, but don't get distracted by it. Get in tune with yourself. Know yourself. I know you're not just, you could, sometimes we label ourselves as being one way. Just know that there's, there's, there's multiple qualities of you. You're not just one. If you're quiet, Don't stay quiet just because people say you're quiet. If you have something to say, say. If you don't have anything to say, then be quiet. But don't label yourself as being quiet. And then when you have things to say, like, oh, they think I'm quiet, so I'll just be quiet. No. You know, we as humans, we are one of the... If you go back to my book when I talked about the eagle. Yeah, the eagle, yeah. And I mentioned, you know, God has given me dominion over all things. So that's just let let me know. Even though the eagle there, it's actually not an eagle. It's just my mind, me having a conversation with my mind, myself. But that's just let, let me know as, as humans, we have the power to become anything that we want to be. You just have to believe in yourself. No one else is going to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. But we struggle with that as humans. We, we think, well, he or she has to believe in me. If they don't believe in me, then maybe I'm not what I think I am. But the moment you realize I am what I am, therefore, nothing else can stop me. Once you get that in your mind, just understanding you are powerful, I am powerful, I can make anything I want happen. I can make my dreams a reality. But you also have to understand when you say your dreams, what exactly you're talking about. Because sometimes, and that's something I've struggled with. So what exactly are my dreams? Is it to be financially wealthy or just me to be creative? And then I told myself, just because you're not where you want to be financially with your craft doesn't mean your dreams are not a reality. Mm. The fact that you have a book out there, your dream is already a reality. You know, but that's the mistake. Or that's, that's, I don't know about everyone, but I don't say that's kind of what people struggle with because they feel, oh, just because I'm not getting compensated financially for my dreams, then Mm. that means a reality. 
we we have in 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 Western culture we have this weird idea that um, money equals happiness, and, and I know for a fact that the the two are not related. And going back to ra- when I was at radio school, because I had to go there full time, I couldn't work, so we survived on my wife's wages, and so we had no money. And that I know was the happiest time of my life. If you fast forward about ten years, and I was working at a radio station in the UK, and I was making more money than I'd ever seen in my life, and I was miserable. And it's not related. It, it, it's it's about fulfillment. It's about you being able to be you. And if you're being held back, you know, when I was making all that money, I was being held back. But when I was at radio school, I was being encouraged to. To, to develop and get it out there for the first time and, and it that's that's more connected to happiness than money and we always get that confused in western society not not all societies are like that but western society the american uk european society is like that it's not connected and your your book doesn't once mention money no it, it doesn't because this is also this is me also teaching myself so understand, when you wake up in the morning, going about society, you always want to think about money and finance. But well, it's after, important. You got to get by, but it's not the be. It's not the key to happiness. Exactly. So that's why. That's why I, I never mention it in the book because I'm like, you find your true, you find happiness when you doing what you love doing, and also. If you're doing what you love doing, there's so many ways to be happy. It's it's one of my famous artists is um, John Mark Michael Basquiat. Mm-hmm. I don't know his work. What does he do? I uh, well, he's passed away now. But back in the late '80s, early '90s, he used to paint. He used to paint. He was good friends with Andy Warhol. Right. And. Uh, and one of the reasons why I love him is he would just paint. And if I remember correctly, whatever money they gave him, he would just put it under his bed. And he would just spend it recklessly because to him, the fact that he could paint and get paid for it, that was the fact that he could just paint and make a, as long as he could get his three square meals. That was fine with him. Yeah, he wasn't worried about the, the monetary aspect of it, you know. And also, the you could when you get off this call, you could actually look into him. Just his lifestyle. What's his name again, Kamal? Jean Michael Basquiat. Okay. That's, uh, I'll also send it to you after this. Great. Uh, and I believe one of his paintings, or after his passed away, just like most art. One of his paint, paintings sold for like a ridiculous amount, and it just comes to show that when you follow your art and you do what it is you love doing, you will be happy. I mean, the outside might not see it, but once again, we have to remind ourselves: like, if I am happy inside, it's going to radiate, and people around me. I'm going to be happy, and they're going to see that this person is actually happy. This you, you can't. I, what I'm trying to say is, you can't fake happiness. Yeah, and I think it comes through in the book because one of the main things that comes through the book, although it's telling you that you may, you may, it's basically it's telling you that you may be wrong, but the overall vibe is positive, all the way through. It's it's an uplifting experience. The book, the, well, for me it was re- having to read it out loud. Hmm. You know it is, and I don't know if I've mentioned, but every part of this book ties to me. It actually has to do with my life, every aspect, and even the ones that come out to be uplifting. It was me being in a situation where I said, "I'm not going to feel bad." by myself being in this situation. I'm just going to make better out of the situation. So there was a, a part about me, I don't remember exactly where, but there's a part about me saying, here comes the sun. Yeah. 
And I remember clearly when I wrote that, I was going through some tough times and my energy level was going down. But then I had to remind myself, is it something you could control at this moment? Can you fix it at this moment? And I'm like, no, I can't fix it. And I'm like, so why are you stressing over it? <laughs> yeah. So that's when I still writing how bad or down I felt. I decided to just make it uplifting by writing, you know, the sun is always out there. You just have to look for it. You know, just the same way you could. It's like we worry so much about things that, that never happened as compared to things that actually happened. Yeah, most of what we worry about never happens. Never happened. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's the thing where we just have to keep reminding ourselves and telling ourselves, if you can't fix it right away, and it's something you can't even fix at all, don't stress about it. Find it. I'm not saying forget about it or find a solution because you worrying about it isn't going to help you. So just find a solution and fix it. You know, so that's kind of like what it's, 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 it's a mantra I, I tell myself. I remind myself all the time. I'm like, Is this something I can fix right now? No. Is this something I can fix down the line? If yes, then I set a plan to fix it. If no, then I don't worry about it. And then I ask myself, is it a life or death situation? If it's not a life or death situation, then I'm, I'm not going to stress over it. <laughs> so, so that's, so that's, that's really, it, it's all boils into the title, you know, building Rome. It's like we're trying to build something beautiful. You just have to keep going for it. Don't stop. Just keep building and keep building. And if you don't like it, if you don't like the direction you're going, you know, take a break. Take a break, reevaluate yourself, reevaluate your situation. All right, okay, what can I do better? Don't give up, but ask yourself, what can I do better? Take your time, answer that question. Don't rush, take your time, answer that question. Figure it out. And then don't get distracted. You know, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Only you can answer that question. And the minute that clicks, then you'll be fine. I'll give you a story. When I was in college, I tried being a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And it only lasted for two weeks. And two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason it did was, I noticed most people, when they, they claim they want to work out, they want to go to the gym, they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it because of, you know, how they'll, they'll look physically and how people will see them. And I came to realize if, you, if, if that's your reason for doing it, then that's the wrong reason. You have to do it for yourself. At the minute you do it for yourself, then you realize, okay, yes, I have a personal trainer to motivate me, but I can motivate myself. You know, that's why I've been going to the gym for the past, for the past, I would say for the past, uh, since 2004, nonstop. And I would go every day and I would wake up at 3.45 in the morning and start my day and I'll go to the gym before work. And that's not, you could tell me I have to be somewhere at seven. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, how can I get my workout in before I get to that place at seven? So I always, everything I do, I always tie to the gym. I, I have to start my day working out. And the reason it's not so much about the fiscal, it's not about the fiscal, it's just something about when you work out, especially if it's something you want to do, it just raises your spirit. You're like, okay, this is what I want to do for myself. And then before I go out there and do what I have to do, 
at least I'm happy that I've done what it is I want to do for myself. So the minute you can understand the joy, making yourself happy, then definitely you wouldn't feel, well, I'm not going to say you wouldn't feel stressed out, but the chances of you getting stressed would be a little bit, it wouldn't be as much. as Because you've already you. done something for yourself to start exactly. the day. That's done. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why I used to tell people when I was training them, which I said lasted for two weeks, I would say, I can't, I, I cannot motivate you. You have to motivate yourself. You have yeah. to find your why. And as soon as you find your why, then you realize you don't need me or you don't need a personal trainer. Because your why will keep pushing you. Your why will wake you up in the morning. Your why will make you go work out at night when everyone is sleeping. Your why will make you find a time to do what it is you want to do. You know, so that's... So I'm, I'm still understanding life. I'm still in life. And every time I go back to this book and I still read it, even though I wrote it, I still read it. I just have to remind myself that, you know, life is not a bed of roses. You know, life is about you following your passion. You know, you having a dream and you going for it. You know, and also, I, I didn't want to follow the typical way of people writing books where you have chapter one, and chapter two, or chapter three, and then you have the fonts are the same or I just said when it comes to, once again when it comes to my thing is also if you, I, I reference Webster yeah with the dictionary I, yeah the dictionary and the reason why I reference Webster is my is I because I tell people I'm like who is Webster <laughs> you know like who comes up with these definitions like because what happens is we spend, especially in formal education, we go through classes and grades, we read all these books, and come up with all these definitions. And then that kind of like limits our creativity because you're thinking, ah, especially when it comes to like punctuations and grammar. Yeah. You're like, I can't put maybe Tom is a boy. You you think too hard about it, you're like, Tom is a boy and then when you especially maybe you want to write poetry or poems or prose you start think at least for me at some point i used to think too hard about it i'm like why am i even thinking about grammar when it comes to me trying to express my thoughts that which i don't know where it's coming from so i just came up with some some of them actually my words like the whole thing about imaginarium imaginarium yeah and what an imaginarium is, is I basically just combine two words, which is <laughs> imagine an aquarium. And I said an aquarium, it's like a sea or, well, let's use an aquarium, a regular aquarium. You can make it out big or small, you want it to be. The same thing with your imagination. So when you combine that, you can either make your imagination this tiny, or you can make your imagination real big. It's kind of Walt Disney. You know, I'm sure Walt Disney's imagination was like real big. Yeah. So I'm like, so it's just an, it's just like an it's just a, a big tank where your thoughts are there. You just pick whichever one you want, or you can just fill it whatever you want. And it's yours. You know, don't restrict yourself to, well, Webster said this. And the, when I used the celestial moment, when I said wisdom and foolish, and I and I said, and I don't know if you get it, but the concept of that was when they gave birth to me. That's why I used AD 1984. Yeah. That's when they gave birth to me. And when I was coming out of my mom's womb, I talked about, I was having a conversation with the Supreme Being, with the I being with God. And I talked about the whole wisdom and foolish. And while I was having a conversation with him, I was asking, well, that's not what Webster said. So that to me kind of saying, even, since coming out of my mom's room, I've been programmed to think a certain way. So when I said wisdom, and I was like, wisdom is a place where the, the wise resides. Yeah. Of, where the fools. And I said, me coming to life, or me being on earth, or me being born, 
is going to make some people laugh. It's going to make some people cry. And that old thing is just a ball. I know I've made seven people cry in my life. Not for me being malicious, just something as little as, you know, being in a relationship. I mean, I'm married now, but being in a relationship with a boyfriend, girlfriend situation where you tell the girl, oh, this is funny, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> and then she starts crying. Or when things are going good and when you're both laughing. Yeah. That's what I said, you're going to make some people cry, you're going to make some people laugh. And also, when you come out of your mom's womb, or when I came out of my mom's womb, I imagine she was crying, not because she was sad, but it was tears of joy. So that's, I just feel like when, before we come to this world, we already have, we already have everything written out for us. That's, that's how I feel. It's, it's just like, it's, it's a journey that we're on, but the Supreme Being already knows what our destination is. Well, we have to go through all this to get to that destination. So it ends the old celestial moment in the book. Yeah, that's... Yeah, so... That's, no, I just it's, it's, ju it's just a great book, Kamal. Uh, Human Lego. So that's why it's by HL. It's called Building Rome. But the Rome that it's talking about is your own Rome. You have to find your Rome. It's called Building Rome Dreams. It's by HL. You can get it as an audio book now. I was honored to be the person who got to narrate it for Kamal. And I, I hope it came out okay. I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, if you, you can get a copy for free with a free 30-day trial at Audible, and I'll put the link in the bottom below in the comments. There's a link there. There'll be a link for the UK and a link for the US. If you click on there, you get a free 30-day trial with Audible. You can download the book for free. And uh, that's the thing to do. Kamal, it's been a pleasure to, to, to meet you at last. Yeah, it is. You know, I've been inside your head for a little while, <laughs> but to actually meet you face to face is actually uh, is actually quite special. So thanks for choosing me to do your book, and I hope it, it, it comes out great, and I hope you sell plenty of them and, and make a difference. And then what, what what's next for you? Is another book planned? Yes, it is. If you go back to the book where I wrote, this is not the end of HL's quest. Yes, so we continue then building Rome, Eras by HL. And the next chapter is love. So the next book will be specifically all about love. That's the plan. So it's still going to be called Building Rome. Yeah. It's going but this one's love. Dreams, Building Rome Dreams. The next one will be Building Rome Love. Love by HL. So it's... I'm sure when that, when that comes out, I'll be glad to have you... That'll be nice. That'll be nice. I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it. I'd love to have you produce it. And uh, just, I know we just went on talking. So what was your take on the book as a whole? What did you get from the book? I loved it. I loved it. It was, it was I, a few years ago, I, I started uh, meditating. And, and I found that the book had a lot of, a lot of the things in it that I get from meditation a lot of the you know the introspection and the but overall just 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 an uplifting a positive vibe every time i read a piece of it and recorded it i came out of the session feeling better than i went in so yeah that's what i got from it it was an uplifting experience it was a positive experience you know and i did it at the height of the the covid uh, pandemic when you know the world went crazy Exactly. And the timing of it, I think, was right as well. And we're still in a crazy time. So I think the timing of it now for people to get it and download it through Audible is right. Because we do need to just look at and ask that question, who am I? What do I want? What makes me tick? And am I doing things? Are my actions, are they conducive with what I really believe? Or am I selling myself short? And we have to ask that question otherwise, because we only get one go at this life. And, and yeah, that's what I got from it. I, I loved it. It was great. It was great. 